Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I just wanted to jump on here and uh, say hello to everybody. I've missed you guys and uh, just wanted to get on camera. I know uh, no, I haven't, haven't been involved in a lot of the videos lately and uh, Tina has been out taking care of a lot of the garden stuff and everything and uh, we've gotten an awful lot of questions about Mark, where you been? What you doing? Why is Tina doing everything? Um, guys and I understand that. But uh, if you follow the channel around for a little while, you probably know that uh, a while back I had a pretty good bout of angina. Um, that was a little scary for uh, somebody like me. I've had two previous heart attacks and uh, that caused uh, some confusion up at the VA. We changed up some of my medications and uh, they've taken a while to get used to. That was uh, one of the big changes. And uh, like I said, if you followed along, you also know uh, Back here a little ways back I had a pretty good bacterial lung infection that landed me up in the hospital and uh, some pretty serious antibiotics did some uh, did some additional damage to my lungs I've already uh, I've already lost both lower lobes of of my lungs and uh, that's about you know a little over 40 percent of my lung capacity so guys uh um, just been a little bit rough getting uh, getting back up to speed but I'm uh, feeling better and uh, been kind of working at my own pace we've been down working in the shop we got all the walls closed in and the wiring done and uh, that allowed me to work at my own pace and have my father over and spend some good time with him um, you know we're uh, neither one of us great builders but uh, we've built before and uh, we managed to get it all up there pretty good I'm sure uh, Tina's taken you out and showed you around the shop a little bit but uh, we're getting ready got some big plans gonna gonna put together a nice workbench we're gonna do uh, one of the main benches first. It'll be the heaviest bench. Um, going to be a pretty solid wood construction. We've got a going to lay in a uh, you know a th nice thick wood foundation, and then we've got some uh, leftover hardwood flooring from the house, and uh, we're going to use that to do a hardwood top on the bench. Should be a should be pretty interesting to watch that thing go together. But uh, we're uh, looking forward to that. Kind of putting the putting the finances and stuff together. We've had a lot of. Uh, a lot of uh, recent changes here on the homestead, and things have uh, gone on. We've got a we've got a mower in the shop that's been sitting there for almost six weeks. Um, we've got a, another little project planned. A surprise I'm going to do, uh, kind of hide it from Tina, and she's going to see this and wonder what I'm up to. But uh, um, got a got a nice little surprise for her coming. That's going to be it's still two or three weeks out, so uh, we'll uh, we'll get to that video when we get to it. But uh, she's in for a big surprise, and uh, she she kind of knows that uh, something's brewing, but she has no idea what it is. And you guys are going to enjoy it too. So you guys will probably see it just about the same time she does. But we just had a just had a comedy of things going on between the weird weather and trying to keep the gardens up, and uh, mowers breaking down. Even my uh, my zero turn I saw the other day, uh, Dutch was on uh, talking about over at the Keeping It Dutch channel. He was talking about a. Uh, his a uh, zero turn mower, and I, I had to have a laugh. I uh, I've got a belt going bad on mine, and uh, um, with our other mower in the shop, um, tried to get out with the zero turn and get some of this uh, some of this mowing done on the hills and stuff. Places it's not really rated to go, but uh, tried to get it out and get some of this mowing done, and it uh, it took me uh, had to put that belt back on four times before we could finish mowing the front yard. So, guys, we're uh, no idea when our regular mower is going to be back. The zero turn is down and out now. It's the uh, last thing it did is uh, before I parked it was throw the belt out the side of it. So couldn't believe the belt came off all those pulleys and shot out the side. But guys, when it's spinning that fast, that's what happened. So um, just been uh, just been kind of piddling around, taking care of some of the busy work that goes on on the homestead. I know. You guys see Tina out there in the garden a lot, and guys, she works harder than any human being I know. She uh, She's go, go, go from the time she wakes up to the time she goes to bed, and uh, she usually goes to bed exhausted. But uh, guys, it's, it's a lot of work keeping up with the homestead, and especially with the gardens and stuff going on. But uh, please know I'm, uh, I'm busy behind the scenes. I don't always do what goes on camera, but I do the things that uh, make sure that we have things to put on camera. You know, I... Uh, Arrange for arrange for uh, raised beds to go in and come out. I do the soil mixtures, order the seeds, all kinds of stuff. Trust me, if I wasn't a if I wasn't keeping busy, Tina'd probably quit feeding me, or she'd have coated me with a fresh coat of paint. So, guys, just know, uh, you know, 
always something going on here at the homestead and when you don't see me um, don't don't worry about it I'm uh, I'm doing fine um, I just uh, a lot of the things I do just aren't camera things you know from a, I might spend a day sweeping and trying to get the trying to get the shop organized or I'm trying to get my tools together down in the garage to get them ready to move over to the to the workshop all just busy little things that uh, don't really make for good camera fodder so but we have been having fun you guys probably saw the video we put some uh, or uh, redecorated the rims on my dad's truck. That was a, that was a lot of fun, and uh, actually, he's gotten a lot of compliments on those rims. If you haven't uh, if you haven't seen the video of us putting those together, maybe go uh, check that out. But uh, guys, it's it's just a it's just a crazy time of the year. It's the dog days of summer. The gardens are struggling. You know, they go through uh, they go through. There's a lot of time when they're being attacked by the bugs and they're attacked by the heat and. Uh, you do a bunch of overwatering and uh, trying to keep everything alive, and that rinses the nutrients out of the soil. And a uh, constant battle of trying to keep everything fed and everything watered at the same time. The more you water, the more you got to feed. And uh, just just been a just been a big adventure. And uh, we got to push through the summer. We'll get to the fall and the fall gardens, and that's always a good time. Uh, a lot of times here in the south, that can be even more productive than the spring garden. So we're really looking forward to it. And uh, guys, it's just a, just a lot of work and a lot of things to get done. But uh, everything's been uh, going good. We've been uh, trying to get in a little bit of time to go fishing. That's uh, something I got away from. Um, we lived in North Carolina for many, many, many years. And uh, um, always had a fishing hole and always had a place to go and a place to catch fish and unwind. And uh, where we moved here to Tennessee, we're kind of uh, landlocked. There's a... Uh, there's not that many big lakes or anything to go fish. There are a lot of impoundments on the river. They back up and there's a whole series of dams and stuff. A lot of uh, Tennessee's power comes from hydroelectric. And uh, we have a couple of uh, nuclear plants, but uh, a lot of it's hydroelectric. There's a lot of dams and a lot of rivers, but we're not really close to them. The closest one with uh, real good fishing is over an hour away. And uh, we just haven't had a good chance to get out and do much. So um, we've been trying to... Uh, make an extra effort to find some local places to go fish something to get back into a um, little bit of history when I was in high school um, one of the things you would uh, never find me in the evenings I, uh, I worked third shift at a gas station I would get off work and go straight to school and uh, on the days when I didn't work I couldn't sleep at night so um, I would go and uh, just spend my nights catfishing we had some uh, we had some reservoirs and uh, they were really deep and they had a lot of really nice catfish in them and I spent many a nights with a lantern and a couple of fishing poles you know crocked up in the rocks along the edge of the reservoir and uh, that's a uh, something I really loved and um, you know just got to enjoy doing when I was in high school and then I got went in the service and I kind of got away from fishing for a little while but when I got out I moved to North Carolina and uh, man, just everywhere in the world to fish and, and we loved it we uh, Tina and I are uh, longtime lovers of going fishing, I guess. We, uh, we fished everything from sharks off of the pier at night to uh, um, the Cape Fear River. We lived about three miles from the Cape Fear River. Huge catfish and uh, lots of good smallmouth and stuff, but uh, always had a place to wet the line. And then we came over here to Tennessee, and uh, we did like everybody else. We had a homestead in North Carolina, but when we got here to Tennessee, we had to start over. We bought a piece of land and a... Uh, and a house and that's all there was land and a house and uh, literally the trees and stuff everything you see Tina and I planted and that's taken us oh just say roughly 10 years and uh, in that 10 years we've worked really really hard it took up a lot of our time and uh, been been fun but it also you know left a few things lacking I needed time to spend with my family Tina and I needed to find some way to get out and unwind and get away from things for a little bit and uh, I think uh, having to contemplate some of these things that have that have happened to me recently with my health, you know, gave us a gave us a kind of different perspective. We want to make sure that we spend time with family and make sure we stay connected, and and we want to stay connected with you guys too. But um, the the homestead is uh, is a lot of work, and it it takes a lot of time, but. We need to get out and uh, try to do a little more fishing, try to get out and enjoy nature a little bit more and then enjoy our homestead a little bit more too. So um, probably going to see a few little changes here on the channel. 
Tina and I have uh, um, recently made some friends that uh, have a have a pay pond and uh, they've got some huge catfish in there. We're going to be going over there and uh, doing some fishing and uh, we found a couple of uh, little holes around here that uh, aren't too too far away. They still got to drive almost an hour but uh, my father has a pond and uh, we've been working on going out and uh, gathering up some fish. In fact I've got a little clip here I'm going to put on the end but um, of us just uh, collecting some fish for his pond. We're going to be uh, trying to catch some uh, larger catfish and put them in there. We want to make sure that he's got some smaller fish so the stop pond stays in proportion and uh, has enough to feed everybody. So we're going to be, uh, we went out the other day, we caught a bunch of little fish. Um, if, you're, uh, if you're a catch and release person, please know when you see the clip that uh, though we did catch a bunch of tiny little fish, which was our objective, um, that we did move them in a commercial quality live well. I've got a really, really nice portable live well. And uh, they were brought back and released. We know a lot about doing stuff like that. Um, we brought the fish up to temperature. We balanced the pH out between the two waters. If you guys are familiar with those things, um, please know that they were done. But the fish were pretty safely caught, pretty humanely handled, and uh, then they were released back into a pond. So. As they were doing well, Dad didn't uh, didn't find any floaters this morning, so um, all's good in the world. We got a few fish stocked up in his pond, and we're going to be doing some more of it. So, guys, watch for us to do a uh, a few more uh, vlog type videos, things where we're just getting out, just Tina and I, just doing different stuff other than other than always playing around here on the homestead. But we're also going to try to keep up. It's a uh, canning season is coming, guys. Those are going to be some great videos. We've got fall gardening season coming up. Those are always fun too, but uh, guys, we're going to make a few changes and we're going to give a little more appreciation of the life we have and uh, what life we have left too. So um, guys, we're going to wrap this thing up and uh, it was nice getting out here. I love love uh, being on camera and talking to you guys. We always get a lot of positive feedback and that is always just a, a great motivator for Tina and I both. So. As uh, the rumors of my demise have been greatly exaggerated, I'm still here, I'm still kicking, but uh, you gotta, you gotta just know um, I'm a disabled veteran. I spend a lot of days on uh, supplemental oxygen, and uh, can't always get out and do the things that you wanna, you wanna see. Those uh, planting and picking and harvesting and and stuff like that are pretty tough on me. So I work at my own pace. Um, not always a uh, enjoyable thing to see mark out there sweating and huffing and puffing and stuff so tina jump in there and she gets a lot done and i, I really appreciate it and it, it allows me the time to get and handle a few things behind the scenes as you know all the stuff that that you don't see on camera but somehow this uh homestead stays mowed things stay fixed things get built things get all that happens behind the scenes and uh Guys, that's uh, always just kind of been my role. I don't have any ego to feed. I don't need to be on camera all the time. And uh, <coughs> one thing, too, is uh, always been important to me that uh, my wife comes first. And uh, I want to put her out there forefront and uh, show she is a strong and capable woman. And uh, we have a lot of uh, homesteads that are being uh, run by guys and stuff like that. Well, I'm okay with running from the background and uh, putting Tina right out front. She uh, she is a hard worker and a capable woman, and uh, I really appreciate all the praise you guys have given her. Um, she eats that up. She she really really appreciates it, and uh, it helps keep her motivated too. She's got a lot to do around here, and uh, it's just amazing what she's able to accomplish. We're gonna let him get on by, and then uh, we'll go ahead and. Uh, wrap this up guys thank you so much for spending time with us um we'll get this video out i want to throw in a little clip here at the end you can check out our uh, little fishing trip up to northeast tennessee and uh, we caught some small fish and released them in the pond got a few clips of that i'll put a little music to it and uh, you guys can enjoy that and then uh we'll go ahead and get out of here but uh, let me roll that footage here real quick check that out and i'll come back real quick and i uh, wish y'all well
Alrighty guys, that's just a quick little clip of our uh, our trip to Northeast Tennessee. We went up to Warriors Pass State Park. It's a great state park if you happen to live in this part of the state or have a chance to visit. Um, they got some uh, nice public fishing docks, which is something we were looking for, easily accessible. I can uh, park close, I don't have to walk too far. and uh, It's uh, just made for a really nice day, spend some time with Dad. He uh, really appreciated the fish, he's been concerned You know, if we're going to stock, stock larger fish in his pond, that we have some smaller fish too to help balance things out. So, Guys, uh, thank you again for spending your time with us, we really appreciate it. And. Uh, Dina and I are still well, still kicking, and uh, we hope the same for you. So, guys, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. I hope you have a wonderful day. We'll catch you in the next one.